Sam Hall here for Daymar Custom Creations, maker of fine camo and standard cedar furniture. The camouflage line has a patent pending process and can be coated in many of the standard camouflage patterns. They use steel fasteners and waterproof glue to ensure a lifetime of enjoyment. Each product is offered in both standard and camouflage. Go to the Pro Shop on GlobalOutfitters.com, check out the furniture section, and get you some Daymar Custom Creations furniture. Sam Hall here for Snap Lock Hunting Blinds. You can get them in the Pro Shop at GlobalOutfitters.com. They're less than $400. Now this blind weighs less than 80 pounds unassembled. It can be assembled with virtually no tools in less than 15 minutes. The double wall molded construction makes them rigid. They're warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. You can get an accessory kit of windows and a shelf. Listen, next time you need a blind, you come to Global Outfitters and get you one. Let us tell you what we're all about here at Global Outfitters. Now, we're a television show that supports an awesome website, GlobalOutfitters.com, and it's an adventure travel site among many other things. We have over 10,000 outfitters in our database, and that allows you to search for your great adventure that's coming up for you. So whether you're trout fishing in northeast Georgia or you're chasing that elk in the mountains of Colorado, we're your choice for finding your next adventure. Now, we write software for outfitters. We allow outfitters to put in their information so you can easily sort through and find your next adventure destination. So whether it's testimonials, reviews, or those outfitters putting in their photo galleries and video tours and virtual tours of their property, we allow them to tell you about their property as well as price their activities, have a booking engine, as well as an availability calendar. So next time you're looking for a great adventure, remember us and our database search on GlobalOutfitters.com. And Sam, that same powerful software that we use for outfitters and the tools we use for outfitters, we also use to market for our wildlife artists. We have a wildlife gallery here in Huntsville, Alabama. We also carry wildlife artwork on our GlobalOutfitters.com website, and we review and interview artists on our Global Outfitters TV show. So any of you artists that are interested in having your uh, artwork marketed, please contact us at GlobalOutfitters.com. Wonderful accommodation and beautiful outdoor scenery makes for a great outdoor adventure. Intense whitetail deer management, a comfortable safe stand, is a great afternoon hunting store for you. A fabulous southern menu will add the finishing touch to your day in the field. Well seasoned guides know what hunters look for, so leave it up to us to help you bag a buck of a lifetime. If you like all the amenities you just heard, then your next great adventure begins here at Pinnacle Place. Please give us a call. Hey, John War here with Global Outfitters Adventure Cooking, and I got my sidekick Ethan with me, and we're going to be trying out a brand new product in the field. We picked this up down at the Deer and Turkey Expo in Birmingham, Alabama. So let me show you how easy it is to put this together. What's in that bag of chair? No, E-Man, this isn't a chair. This is the Allspit Rotisserie Grill, and it's a portable grill that you take. It looks like a bag chair because it comes in a small portable uh, carrying case, no bigger than a bag chair, and it doesn't weigh much more than a bag chair, but it's easy to carry. So let me show you how easy it is to put this together, and we're going to be cooking some good food on it today. Now I'm going to take my main beam here and my hammer, and this is the only physical part of it, just driving this in the ground. After you get your support bracket in, the next thing you do is you take, you take one of the support clips, just easily you squeeze it, slide it down, and then you take your main support here, and this is the bracket that holds everything together, put it down, easy to move this, if you want it up off the fire more, you just move the bracket up. Or if you want it down lower on the fire, you just need to back it down. Then you've got your spit or your auger here. Now this just sits inside this little, little cradle here. And the end here, on the end you have like a little square notch and it fits inside your motor right here on this point. And then you slide it up. And it's got two little grooves here that it rotates on. And that's all there is to it. And like I said, 
these, these little uh, brackets here, you put as many of these on there as you need to keep the meat as the, as the auger's turning, just to keep the meat from, from slipping and just staying in one spot. You want it to keep turning and keep rotating to keep it from burning. So the next thing we need to do is get our fire built, get some good coals going, and then I'm gonna go and load this thing up with some good meat. Hey, we're back and we're ready to put the meat on. Now, I took two pork roasts, I've got six quail, and I've got two Cornish hens, and I made up a brine last night. I took a gallon of water, I took a cup of salt, I took a half a cup of sugar, and I took some spices, and I put about a fourth a cup of uh, apple vinegar in there. So it's been soaking in that for, for about uh, something like 18 hours, so it's gonna have a really nice flavor to it. So now I'm gonna show you how you put the meat on the spit. Now first of all, we got these little brackets I was telling you about. They've got the points on here, and be sure when you put the meat on here, they go on, on the points to keep the meat from just staying stationary as this thing turns. So the first thing we're gonna put on, we're gonna move it all the way back to, toward the back. And I'm gonna take one of the pork roast and try to get it centered up. Now that's gonna stay on there stationary as I go. So now I'm gonna load up the rest of the meat. And actually these quail are too small to go on the spit. So I'll actually be putting them on these, these smaller points as I go. Hey, I got the meat on the spit. I'm ready to put it over the fire. Now first I get my bracket here, put it on the rod. I've already got the stop here. Now let's get this thing set. All I do is place this in I take my motor, it's got, it's got a little square, square notch there that goes on the back of the, of the spit. Swing it around over the fire. We're cooking. Hey, one of the great things about the off-spit grill is that you can take the meat off while it's still cooking. Just swing it around. I'll get down here with it. Hey, we just took the meat off the grill. We've got our pork roast, we've got our Cornish hen, and we got our quail. And I've got a great meal here for my family and friends. So who all here thinks that the Auspit Grill is awesome? <laughs> so for Global Outfitters, we'll be seeing you next week on our adventure cooking.